making a movie physically and mentally destroys you. You know, it just, it just does. It becomes such a labor of love that sometimes we neglect to look at it as a business. People lock into this idea that there is a correct way to do things. There's not. There's a million ways to do it. Video has become the most effective way to get people to do something that it is you want them to do. It's time for filmmakers to get real with Jeffrey Michael Bayes and Forrest Day Jr. Thanks for joining us. This is kind of a special episode, a special edition of our podcast. We're following this story about the stripper. Thousands of indie films might be affected by this. That the stripper has apparently closed. Now, we can't confirm that they are closed. But here's what happened. Throughout the year, clients of distributors started to notice that they stopped being paid. So that, that's kind of, yeah, you know, that's, a, that's a red. Yeah, that's a red flag. Yeah. yeah. And um, eventually this got to the point where people started to to actually drive out to the office in mm. Los Angeles to see if there's anybody there. Yeah, to look through the window of nothingness. Right. And uh, apparently uh, they've closed their offices. Mm-hmm. So Indie Film Hustle has been reporting in the past couple of weeks and has been talking about this quite a bit, actually. And uh, that distributor is, uh, it looks like, they are closing, they have closed or they are in the process of shutting down their service. Now, we have reached out to distributor for comment. We've given them several days to respond. They have not responded to our questions. Interestingly, though, a lot of their competition has responded, <laughs> but yeah. uh, uh-huh. uh, but we won't we don't we don't really need to get into what they have said. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the bottom line is, if you have a film that is distributed or aggregated through distributor, you may uh, not this even is know. going to affect you. You might not know. You might not know um, they used it. And that's another thing is that some distributors also use distributor. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you might be going through a different distributor and not realizing that your film is actually going through distributor as well. You may want to call so, your distributor and ask them. And yeah. Try to try to head this off if you can. And we kind of looked into the numbers and uh, it's really hard to pin down how many films are affected by this. If you do a, a search on Amazon for a distributor, we get 903 results. So at least that amount of films are live uh, today on Amazon from distributor. Now, if you do the same kind of a search on IMDb, a lot less, only 93. So, And then there's an unsourced number on Wikipedia, which if we're going to Wikipedia, that tells us that the information is scarce says that uh, distributor has released thou- at least a thousand films per year. And Stephen Fellows, which is a uh, film data researcher, posted an article today or yesterday, kind of uh, going a little bit deeper into that and uh, kind of saying it's probably less than a thousand films per year. But the, you know, the, the, the bottom line is, you might be affected by this, and that's a lot of films. That's a lot of filmmakers. And the question that is raised is, uh, first of all, are you going to get paid? Mm-hmm. The royalties that you have come again. And another question that people are concerned about is, what about the hard drives that are storing all of those films? Mm-hmm. Are they at risk of possibly getting into the wrong hands and being pirated? Mm-hmm. So that that was a that was a question that somebody had raised on on Facebook at one point. Yeah. Now, I just want to say, though, that according to distributors website, they are not taking new orders. They say at this time, distributor is not accepting any new orders. Now, that's the only thing they're saying. Now, we do have evidence through Facebook from people that have posted uh, screenshots of email correspondence with distributor. Mm-hmm. that they have been communicating with their clients, especially those that have requested their films be taken down. So apparently if you if you request 
for a distributor to take your film down. They are responding and they're doing that pretty quickly. And from a consumer point of view, and you don't know what movies have gone through distributor, but uh, somebody brought up the point on on the Facebook about when your when a movie is taken down, uh, once this all kind of happens, what happens to that movie? If you what happens? Well, uh, according to this, it goes away. The best thing to do is to download it locally onto your hard drive. So if you have a movie that you you might think um, they have, and you know, if as a consumer, not the filmmaker, uh, download it. That way, you at least uh, still own that movie. Joining us now is John Reese. He's a media strategist and a filmmaker. He's also the founder of Eight Above and the author of Think Outside the Box Office. John, thanks for joining us on short notice. We've been talking about Distriber and the possibility that they're closing. We, we don't have any confirmation of that. So how, how big of a deal is this? I think it's a pretty big deal. They were like one of the first of this kind of aggregator that were open and friendly to filmmakers. And they've been going for a number of years. So I I don't know the number of filmmakers that they've worked with, but I'm sure it's not a small number. Um, And whenever this happens, it's kind of a disaster for not just for the filmmakers involved, but kind of for the filmmaking community involved, because to lose, you know, distributor was essentially an indie film advocate in a sense and provided avenues for independent filmmakers to get their work up in front of larger platforms and to be paid for that. And for this kind of thing to happen, it's, it's just not great. So in a sense, it's, it's kind of a big deal. On the other hand, for filmmakers who are not dealing with, who have never dealt with um, distributor and who have new films coming out, it's not a big deal because there's other avenues. So, you know, there's other options. The thing right. that it does make you pause and think is how to proceed, um, you know, how to be cautious in the future, knowing that this could happen, you know, at any point in time um, to a potential aggregator, like aggregators can go out of business owing people money. Distributors also have gone bankrupt owing people money. It's not a new thing to the film world. So how often do royalties come in from a place like Amazon? Generally, it's like I have like I still have Bomit with Cinedime, right? So, and I don't even think they deal with independent filmmakers that much anymore. Um, I think their business model has shifted. Um, and generally, I get my quarterly statements. And so if you're not getting quarterly statements and then payments quarterly, that's an issue. How difficult is it for a filmmaker that has decided to pull their film off of distributor? to then put it back up another way and then well, it's, get royalties yeah, from it. Yeah, so it's not that difficult to put it up elsewhere. It's going to cost you again. So you're going to have to pay the encoding key fees again. One thing, though, is you don't have to do this for Amazon. Like Amazon and um, a film I worked with recently um, that went with an aggregator for hire excluded ag- Amazon and did Amazon themselves. Number one is you want to, you have to get your film taken down from the platforms by Go Digital, which is basically the parent company, it is the parent company of Distriber. I think that's going to be the most difficult thing because my understanding is that they're relatively unresponsive at this point and trying to probably trying to figure out what they're going to do. It does sound like they are pulling off films if you request it. Um, okay. So as of last week, they have been doing that. So okay. we don't know how long that will last. <laughs> but how is the back? How how quickly is the response going on that? I've heard it's uh, within a day, so oh, pretty fast. Well that's, yeah, that's that's actually pretty good. Okay, so the first thing to do is to get it taken down from distributor, and then you put it up yourself. And then you, but you can't do it yourself because part of the reason the not part of the reason the reason aggregators exist is in the very, very early days, the platforms did deal with, some of the platforms did deal with filmmakers directly. And then they realized, oh my God, there's thousands of these people out there. (laughs) We can't deal with these. Like, who does this? Oh, DVD distributors work as gatekeepers. Let's talk to the DVD distributors, I'm giving you very early history, and turn those people into, you know, gatekeepers and get content from them And that's how aggregators, digital aggregators are born, basically. So let's go through some of those alternatives 
some alternative aggregators and even distributors? The most readily available um, aggregators for hire are Bitmax, um, Quiver, um, and I think Quiver is the one that's used the most. Um, and I don't have relationships experience with either of those, so I'm not going to. And then mm. there's a very filmmaker friendly um, group called the Film Collaborative. So um, who actually I think is cheaper. So um, I would you know recommend going through the Film Collaborative um, at this point, but Quiver and then potentially Bitmax. So those are the ones for hire. Now, in terms of trying to get, and I think that's pretty much going to be your, your route because any film that's already been up is going to be considered, when it goes up again, is going to be considered a library title. And it's going to be hard to get a dis- distributor on percentage basis, such as Gravitas, Giant, because these are older titles and the chances of them making revenue from it are much lower than if they take a new title. So Gravitas, Passion River, uh, Giant, um, et cetera, um, are going to be less likely to take your film unless they see it as, unless you can show sales figures that show not only that it's evergreen, but evergreen at a pretty decent clip. Um, so say it's, uh, you know, an evergreen horror film or a film about pot or anything that's working um, on a really strong evergreen basis, I would imagine it's going to be more difficult with those. Not impossible, nothing's impossible, but I would just say the easiest thing is going to go straight to another aggregator for hire. Um, The thing that's going to be a problem for filmmakers is that they're going to have to pay their, you know, encoding costs again. And it's just, it's too bad that at least at this point, iTunes can't just hey, you have a film on iTunes, it's already been encoded, it's already gone through QC, we'll just switch it over here. So the one thing, though, is that Amazon doesn't charge, at least at this point, the last I've checked, Amazon doesn't charge for encoding and to put your film up on Amazon. Nor really does Vimeo, although they you need to be a certain level of their pro. So you might consider another alternative if you don't want to, if unless being on iTunes you feel has been very lucrative for you, or it's important for you to be on iTunes because it's important for you to be on iTunes, you might consider doing Amazon and Vimeo and calling it a day and driving all your traffic to Amazon and Vimeo. That would be the lower budget, more DIY solution um, because it's going to be, you know, to get back on Amazon, it's going to be probably at least around $1,000. And you have to really think, are you really going to make $1,000 worth of revenue? Some of the films that I think are affected are, you know, been out for five years. Are they, they're not going to be making even $1,000 in the next couple of years. So it sucks that then you're, you've already paid to go on iTunes and I feel your pain. You know, you've paid to go on iTunes and, you know, now you're not on iTunes anymore. I'll throw out a third alternative for you. If you actually don't care about the revenue and you only, if your goal is, and this is, I always, when I work with film clients, you always want to look at what the goals are. And if your goals are not monetary and are awareness and having the film in front and available to as many people as possible, you might consider not pulling your material from distributor, just letting it be on iTunes, people, and just know that you're not going to get that money. Mm. Or it's not know that you're not going to get that money. Someone might come in and make distributor, you know, function as a proper citizen in, you know, a business citizen. But barring that, if there's a reason that you have for your film being on iTunes and financially it doesn't seem like it makes sense to re-encode it, you potentially leave it up there so that it's available for people to get things, want it to access things through iTunes. How's this going to affect films uh, internet movie database pages that have been up for a while. Uh, is that all tied together with this? Like if you remove your film and then re upload it, does it lose that connection? So I, my, my thinking is, and I don't know how it works. So I can't say, Okay. but I would imagine if you have it pulled off of Amazon by, um, by distributor, it's going to go away. That link will go away. But when you upload it yourself in the back end of Amazon, 
one likes to think that it will find it, you mm-hmm. know, that it will, but there's no necessary guarantee to that because frankly, you didn't do that. You, IMDb did that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's not something you as a filmmaker said, Oh, list my film on Amazon. I got you. It's something that they're doing. So it will be interesting to see as this happens. Um, and the problem, you know, the thing is with all these platforms, to be perfectly honest, is that they're not used to being that responsive to filmmakers because, you know, they're functioning as a technology company. But that being said, I'm, I think that you as a filmmaker, you re-put your film up on Amazon and if you don't see it linked within a couple of weeks or even if you – I would contact – reach out to IMDb and you know, tell them what your situation is and be persistent and see what you can get you – know, how that can proceed, you know, how you can get mm-hmm. that handled. Okay, good advice. Good advice. It will be interesting to see what happens more like if it's a Google search. Like I think people would like go in and go um, put in the film title and then put streaming. Like that's what I do and I think a lot of people do that. And then it's li- listed and it will be interesting to see what happens to those listings. Mm-hmm. Yes, and yeah, I guess that's yeah. what I'm thinking about, listings. Um, you know, like reviews and are reviews going to go away? Are, you know, is all of that stuff going to go away? So what else is going to go away? My understanding is that if you have customer reviews on iTunes and when you take down that iTunes, um, that iTunes through distributor, all those reviews do go away. Oh, okay. Which sucks because yeah. it was probably very difficult to get people to review your film directly on iTunes anyway. Mm-hmm. The good news is, is that iTunes also relies on Rotten Tomatoes and those reviews don't go away. But your reviews on the individual platforms will go away. Yeah. The, 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 the other thing that's interesting about all of this is that I think transactional revenue has been declining. And um, one of the things I'm going to be writing about in the future is like what's happening between for independent filmmakers, transactional revenue, um, SVOD revenue, and now potentially AVOD revenue. Because I was talking to a distributor that I'm um, um, work closely with, and um, he was saying that you know the future is AVOD revenue, which is ad supported revenue Mm -hmm. um partially because you know as these subscription platforms become more focused on producing their own content and acquiring less um and because there's going to be a plethora of subscription platforms and not everyone's going to subscribe to everyone Mm -hmm. um that people will start sampling more off of avod platforms and so anecdotally it seems like that revenue is starting to increase. And so that's a good thing. Okay, that's John Reese, um, author of Think Outside the Box Office. We thank John for joining us. So again, we're following this story that Distriber is uh, apparently closing. We can't confirm that. The aggregator that many independent films have been using for the past several years. In fact, they've been around for Almost a decade, I believe. Mm. It were founded in 2007. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's also interesting if you uh, their Twitter account has been deleted. Uh, their Facebook account has been deleted. But their website is still active. Interesting. But not taking new orders. Hmm. That's you know they could come back down the road. I mean, I would imagine they'll something will be said. I mean, it's never good to go dark like this, especially with customers. But maybe there's something in the works in the background to, uh, you know, go out with less of a splash. I don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah, they, yeah. maybe they just can't talk about it. I mean, I'm trying to remain optimistic. Right. But uh, And that's the big question that everybody has. Should we pull our films off? And by mm-hmm. the way, I have no dog in this fight. Uh, many of our listeners might be, might be affected by this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But the, that's the big question. Do you pull them off? Do you panic? Do you pull them down and then try to resubmit them and go through that process? Now, Linda Nelson of Indie Rights, now she's a distributor as well, kind of competition to distributor. But she says that it looks like they're going into bankruptcy. And the reason she says that is because uh, they have just hired a firm 
called Glass Ratner, and they're known as a bankruptcy specialist. So that's kind of causing people to panic a little bit. But Linda Nelson says it's probably a good idea to pull your film off before they actually do file bankruptcy, because then after that, after they go bankrupt, the likelihood of getting your films taken down, it gets a little bit more difficult. Good, good, good wisdom, I think. And if you leave your film up, I mean, yeah, your film will be seen, but you are not going to get any money for it. So that's your choice. You know, it's just like John said, if, if you, you yeah, it's going to cost you money to resubmit and go through all that problem. But if you want to keep everything up and just not make the money, Mm -hmm. uh, that's also an option. That was an interesting bit of advice. I I found that interesting. Like, yeah, you're just looking for eyes on your film. Yeah. Uh, Um, you know, if it's not up there for the money, yeah. I mean, I guess you're all set. So you've been, uh, Forrest, you've been looking at social media. Anything interesting uh, from filmmakers uh, commenting on this? I, I found a great pancake recipe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, there, you know, there, there's the, uh, there, there, there's a lot of hearsay, and it's, you know, being like I'm yeah, looking at yeah. Facebook here, and I'm so afraid to even say some of this stuff there, you know, it's a lot of it's hearsay about, you know, things that are going on behind the scenes. It sounds, you know, there, there's been lawsuits and whatnot. And, um, so in, in timing, you know, people are putting things together, but a lot of people on social media are just, uh, you know, they're sad about it because, you know, as indie filmmakers, people who have used them, speak highly of them you know they they yeah. said it, they made it easy they were great to work with and uh, you know so, so i a lot of this is hearsay i don't i don't really want to like quote anyone there's more questions than answers right now but we'll see what time uh brings just keep yeah. your if you have a film if you have an interest in this just keep your eyes peeled and and we want to hear from you too tweet us at borges film or email us at info at borges.com have you been affected by this? Um, what do you think about this? What are you planning to do? Are you pulling your film off? Yeah, no, we do. We want to hear from you. We have all kinds of questions. Um, just send us, you know, what you're going to do or what you've heard or, and maybe we can uh, address it in a future podcast. We can right. talk about what you know. We will stay on top of this. So be sure to hit the subscribe button. If we get anything new, we will uh, put a new podcast episode out and give you an update. And we'll have some guests on in the coming weeks, uh, like Ben Yenny. We're also going to have Linda Nelson on at some point, and we'll be following this as it goes on. I still think I should have been able to go in the background while while breaking news. So that completes our breaking news coverage for today, but be sure to stay tuned. Thank you. Get Real Indie Filmmakers is a production of Borges Networks, 2019.